Hi everyone, welcome to The Storyist. In a world full of judgment, we should never assume things about someone just because he or she comes from a different race. We should always take time to understand them for who they really are. Today, I will be telling you a story about a racist professor who shames his foreign exchange student by assuming that he is doing harmful substances in school. What he didn't know was that the student was not what he thought he was. Stay until the end of the video to find out who the student really was and what was the realization of the racist professor. One busy Monday morning, Professor John is collecting the physics assignment of his grade 10 students. He always commends the work of his students, especially Arthur, one of the top athletes in the university. Arthur walks towards Professor John and informs him that he wasn't able to finish his assignments in physics because he was busy practicing for the upcoming sports fest. Instead, he brings him merchandise from the upcoming event. How sweet of you. You can always submit the assignment any time. A sweet reply from Professor John. Arthur returns to his seat feeling at ease, knowing that his professor favors him no matter what. However, when Amir Hafiz, a foreign exchange student from Malaysia, approaches Professor John, his expression shifts quickly from being enthusiastic to being mean. Oh, Amirish what? Professor John is having a hard time pronouncing the name of Amir. I will be calling you Mike instead, says the professor without even looking at him. Professor John, I cannot submit my assignment on time because, without even listening to Amir's reason, he says that he is being unreasonable to his other classmates, that maybe he is just too lazy to finish the assignment given. I was having a hard time understanding some English words and a hard time focusing, Amir continues. Instead of giving an extra hand to his foreign student, he blames him for studying abroad and trying to fit in the society where he doesn't even belong. He also gives Amira zero score for the activity. On the next day at the faculty room, all the professors are at the meeting regarding harmful substances found in the restroom of grade 10. I wonder who brings that to our university, Professor John assumes, Professor John assumes that it was Amir who brought the harmful substances inside the university. After all, he is a foreign student from an Asian country in which harmful substance use is high. After the meeting, Professor John directly meets his grade 10 students. He immediately discusses topics focusing on physics. During the recitation activity, he asks his students if they can solve the problem on the board. Most of the students are raising their hands, begging him to call their name. But apparently, he notices Amir wearing a hoodie, shades, and is leaning his face on the table. Mikey, Mikey, Amirish, Amir, he furiously calls Amir. What on earth are you doing in my class? Get up there and answer this problem. Amir drags himself in front of the classroom. Faster, Asian guy, shouts Arthur. All his classmates are laughing at him, and the professor ignores Arthur and does not do anything. Okay, Asian guy, oh, I mean Mike, says Professor John, and points out the marker to Amir. He takes a black marker and stares at the whiteboard. He contemplates the answer and creates a shortcut solution. Eventually, he comes up with the right answer for the problem, but the professor is not happy about it. What I am asking is the complete method of the solution, not this petty answer. However, Amir just shakes his head, telling the professor that he finds it confusing for the long method solution, and it's easier to understand the lesson using the shortcut method as his basis. The professor seems pissed off by the argument. He cannot win against Amir's argument, so he just instructs Amir to remove his shades and hoodie instead as it's not appropriate in the class. Amir follows the instructions of his professor, exposing his bloodshot and puffy eyes. The professor asks him, why are your eyes like that? Amir is secretly having trouble sleeping lately, and he also lost some weight. That explains everything, said the professor. He immediately grabs Amir's hand, 
leading him to the principal's office with the accusations of using harmful substances inside the university and influence his classmates to use it as well. Amir denies all the accusations by his professor and explains himself, but no one listens. Instead, they command Amir to call his parents. But my parents are in Sabah, Amir says. I can call my aunt, he insists. After a while, Amir's aunt arrives at the school wearing Malaysian traditional clothes. The professor expresses a condimentary laugh. Are we at some costume event? The professor asks sarcastically. Amir's aunt apologizes for how she presents herself, explaining that she has a traditional meeting and went straight to the university after receiving a message from her nephew. The principal explains the reason why he summoned her to the office. He explains that Amir is a potential dealer of harmful substances inside the university, which is against their code. Amir's aunt denies all the accusations and enumerates all of Amir's good habits, that he is helpful, especially to the elderly, obedient and God-fearing, giving them assurance that he wouldn't do such things. However, the explanations of his aunt seem to not count. They are insisting that it doesn't change anything. In their eyes, he is still the kid who influences his classmates to try harmful substances. It shows on his appearance, especially his bloodshot and puffy eyes, Professor John insists. Amir's aunt explains that the bloodshot and puffy eyes are due to being homesick. His parents are not on good terms as well, and he feels bad knowing that he can't do anything. This is the first time Amir is separated from his parents. They work hard for him to study in the U.S. so he can have a good foundation in business. And so when the time comes, he can manage his own family business. What type of business? Harmful substances production so that it will hit a million sales? That is absurd. No wonder the rate of harmful substances in your country is very high, because you're making them as a business, says Professor John in a smirk. Before Amir and his aunt can react from the words of Professor John, the door suddenly opens. I found this boy using harmful substances behind the gym, and he is even using it to make money, exclaims the guard while holding Arthur. I don't believe it, argues Professor John. The school guard explains that he also witnesses Arthur selling the harmful substances to his classmates. The principal immediately calls Arthur's parents and a social welfare representative. The professor cannot believe that his favorite student was the one using harmful substances in the university. Professor John looks at Amir and his aunt with shame. I'm sorry for misunderstanding, pleads the professor. Save it, replies Amir's aunt. She also explains that the family business she is talking about is not connected with harmful substances. Instead, it is in line with the value and diversity of every race. They want to educate the young ones to respect every difference, no matter what. Embarrassed, the professor cannot say another word. The aunt further explains the reason why she is wearing the national costume of their country. It's not because I want to attend some funny party, but because I just came from a meeting about the union of U.S. and Asian education, the one where this school is actively participating in. Have you not heard about that, professor? Amir's aunt asks in confidence. Amir's aunt explains that the university supports the diversity and unity of each race. Each race may have different appearances, traditions, and ways of living, but that's what defines them. That's what makes them beautiful and powerful in their own unique way. She also explains that his role as a professor is to nurture that vision to the students he is handling. She also reveals herself as the director of the said organization where their school participates and she cannot tolerate such things in the company. Therefore, she will recommend the termination of Professor John. Professor John wants to be furious at what he just heard, but he remembers he has bills to pay. He quickly apologizes for what he did, on how he judged Amir by his race, and on how he judged Amir's aunt by her clothing. The harm has been done, replies Amir's aunt. The professor's apologies cannot erase the pain that he caused Amir just because of his race. 
You should never assume or judge someone based on the color of their skin or the pronunciation of their name without even trying to know them for who they really are, says Amir's aunt before she leaves the room. Afterwards, Amir walks out as well, leaving the professor feeling nothing but shame for himself. That's all for today. We hope you enjoyed that video and we'll see you in the next.